Welcome to Wednesday, August 28th, 2024. Your day with the podcast brought to you by ConverseCountyTourism.com. Beautiful landscapes, historic sites, and unique downtowns await visitors to Douglas and Glen Rock. Plan your visit at ConverseCountyTourism.com. Well, we're going to be looking at some fire danger going up. This is uh, something that we really need to stay on top of for the rest of this week and into the weekend. Although the rain recently here has certainly helped in fire suppression and helped things out, things could easily start back up again because we're going to have rock bottom humidity, warm temperatures, and today in particular. Now, after today, the wind isn't going to be as much of a factor but today the wind will be a factor. And as you see in this image here in the right, where the only thing you can see is the little toenail of the moon there, as a lot of you notice, as we'll show you here in a moment, sky is really cleared out, but humidities have really, really dropped. So we gotta be careful for high fire danger through the Labor Day weekend. Be careful out there. Now the rain that's gonna fall in the western half of North America is gonna stay really in the far northern areas and the far southern areas of the west. Temperatures, after cooling off a bit tomorrow, temperatures on the way back up for the weekend through Labor Day Monday. Spotty thunderstorm activity will return to some areas Sunday and Monday to the Intermountain West, but we really don't expect a lot of them, just a few. So we're gonna hold firm and still say that this Labor Day weekend is gonna be a pretty good one weather-wise. Now, before we get to some other things, we're gonna kinda go in reverse here a little bit. Sunspot activity and solar flare coronal mass ejection activity remains very, very high. This was taken last Friday, and you can see very active sunspot activity across the sun, and more of it's coming. And last night, the K index shot way up. It almost got to six. In fact, I think it did briefly. And therefore, if you were out and about last night or watching this closely, the Aurora Borealis was back, seen as far south as Lake McConaughey, Nebraska last night. And as uh, we've told you before, with the a very active sun near its solar max right now, the opportunity for more Aurora for the rest of the summer into the fall season is going to be high. So if you stay on top of things, more opportunities will present themselves. Again, rewinding a bit, Photos I was not able to get into the last couple of podcasts. This was back when we had the subtropical moisture. Great lightning shots here from Jan Curtis and Cheyenne from the thunderstorm activity late last week. There you go, another big towering cumulus cloud, cumulonimbus cloud that we're seeing right there from thunderstorms that developed last week and all that deep monsoonal moisture. But now, with the monsoonal moisture out, we have clear skies like this and rock bottom humidity. The National Weather Service out of Riverton posted this photo yesterday to their social media, and uh, it's quite remarkable. If you look, there's not a cloud in Wyoming, except maybe right there. <laughs> but yesterday afternoon, boy, we talk about that dry air coming in, and we had almost no cloudiness at all over not only Wyoming, but surrounding states. If you look really close, you can see the snow that fell in the Northern Wind Rivers and the Absorcas right there with that frontal system that came on through. But we haven't had a satellite image like that in quite a while. So weather patterns are changing. The satellite image this morning shows the two areas of interest. There's the subtropical moisture right now. There's still some down into Arizona, New Mexico, and Northwest Mexico. Here is the next trough of low pressure in the northern panhandle of Idaho, far northwest Montana. You can really see it on the water vapor image with a swirl right there, the comma-shaped cloud right there that you see coming on through. And by noon today, that low is going to straddle the U.S.-Canadian border. This is where we're going to get the wind. The wind is going to be in that gradient as it heads east, so we'll need to be ready for that. Winds are going to be picking up by Friday noon. That low is headed up to Hudson Bay. It'll drag a cool front into the Great Lakes region in the northeast United States eventually. But this high pressure ridge will start to build back to the north. That will bring back the warm temperatures and eventually a little bit of subtropical moisture. The rain forecast through Friday looks like this. It's going to be raining the most in southern Alberta, 
Far northern areas of Montana, they could use some moisture right here. They're gonna get a little bit of it. But you can see there's just a, a real wedge of much, much drier air moving in. The suppression of the subtropical moisture is gonna stay down here. It could be wet down here in the long term, something we'll talk about tomorrow. But you can see that the drier air is really making a big difference. There's the precipitable water by late this afternoon. You can see that very, very dry air coming on in with this pattern change, still the subtropical moisture down here and out on into the plains. If you convert that to relative humidity by late afternoon and evening, look at the Snake River Valley here in Idaho. We have relative humidities below 10%. We're down into the teens in many other areas right there. You combine very warm temperatures, very low humidity with the wind, and there's the wind gust potential through tomorrow morning. That's why we have very high fire danger. Again, so be careful out there. And humidities are gonna likely stay very low throughout the course of the Labor Day weekend. Although today is probably the worst when it comes to the wind. This is why by the middle of the three day weekend, this is by Sunday, a big high pressure ridge is over the Rockies. And we're gonna see basically a, a pretty quiet stretch of weather. Stepping you through what we did yesterday, Friday through Monday, so you can plan your weekend. This is the thunderstorm coverage by late Friday afternoon and evening, staying down south where the subtropical moisture is. Saturday, it's really about the same. On Sunday, a little bit of moisture gets a little bit further north. So across the Wasatch of Utah, southwest Colorado, up here, a little bit of activity. This is this is this is what you would call your classic isolated thunderstorm pattern. Just really nothing too widespread, but nonetheless, a few could pop up, especially over the mountains in the higher terrain. And this is what Monday looks like, basically the same as Sunday. So we're gonna have a, a nice weekend, mainly only interrupted by a couple of isolated showers and storms at most. Now, got some fun stuff to pass along since we don't have a lot to talk about weather-wise. Thanks to Shane Smith in Payona, Colorado for making me aware of this. Recently, the Washington Post had this neat little thing come out about how accurate temperature forecasts are across the lower 48 states. And uh, what is highlighted here is how accurate can your temperatures be? The, the most accurate temperatures, according to their analysis, is down in Florida that seven days out, you can be very close with your temperature forecast. Same in the desert Southwest. Then as you get into the nation's midsection, notice your, your forecast here are the worst, right in the nation's heartland. Yesterday, we talked about air masses, and you may be wondering, well, why is the temperature forecast so wrong in the nation's midsection? When we talked about those air masses between the continental polar, the maritime polar, the continental tropical, the maritime tropical air masses moving in and out of the region, well, one reason is that you have these forecasts that are sometimes, sometimes really accurate and sometimes not, depending on your region, really has to do with air masses. Now, if you think about it, Florida is surrounded by water and water retains heat very, very well, the energy in the water. So if you're surrounded by water, your temperatures are gonna be much more stable than as opposed to when you're further away from the oceans. But we talked about the exchange of air masses coming all the time into this part of the world here. So you're changing air masses more frequently here and you don't have the, the effect of the water keeping your temperatures more stable. So the closer you are to the coast, okay, the better your temperature forecasts are going to be. Where your air masses are changing more frequently, your forecasts are gonna be less accurate. Now I don't think Honestly, I have some disagreement with this analysis right here for this part of the country. I don't think it's as good as it's showing. But nonetheless, if you're near the water along the coast, your temperature forecasts are gonna be much more even. The nation's midsection, you know, this is, this is where the phrase come from, wait five minutes for the weather to change. Really, that's kind of, there's some truth to that and the statistics show that. If you wanna to go to that web link that I showed you right there, you can enter your city, your location, and it will calculate where you fall in regards to this map. So thanks for sending that along. Now, one reason that uh, I was sent this was because of Payona, Colorado, because in their analysis, they said, well, where's the least 
accurate forecast for the United States, at least when it comes to the temperature. Honestly, temperature is probably the easiest thing for weather forecasting in terms of uh, trying to get close as you can. Precipitation and clouds are the, the hardest thing. If you wanted to do a real true analysis of accurate forecast, you would include temperature, but along with that would be precipitation, clouds, and wind. Then you would need to put all those together to really find the most accurate forecast. But it just stuck with temperature to keep it easy. But what is the location in the lower 48 that is forecasted the worst? That is Payona in Colorado. They're off by as much as six degrees on their forecast. So if you live on the western slope of Colorado, you already know this. Uh, but you can thank the terrain, the combination of the air mass exchange and all of those things. And the fact that models don't do very well in complex terrain. Complex terrain is a fancy word to say mountains. Mountains, valleys, canyons very rugged terrain where you have big changes in elevation over a short distance, it's just hard to model. Uh, so that's one reason why the forecast is off is by as much as six degrees. So for the worst forecast in the region, in the United States, go to Payona. Speaking of Payona, just we talked about highlighting podcasts and other things that you may want to listen to or go to to get some interesting things. Uh, great episodes of what's called Growing Home, a gardening show uh, from KVNF in Western Colorado, Mountain Grown Community Radio. Uh, the host is Jonathan Rubar, but for those of you that are in gardening and aware of gardening in this region, you might want to listen very closely to Jonathan Rubar's voice. I'm just, just saying that. But if you want some gardening tips, I would really recommend going to KVNF's website, listening to Growing Home with Jonathan Rubar. Have yourself a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.